Okay, well, I am sitting outside the Walmart in Phoenix, Arizona. My coworker Tony has dropped me off here so I can try out Waymo's autonomous drivers. Uh, I'm gonna ride in a driverless car uh, over to the airport. He's on his way over to the airport himself. So it'll be fun to see uh, who gets there first. Um, but according to the app, the vehicle should be pulling up in just a couple of minutes. And I am all set here with luggage ready to go. And uh, this should be fun. And here it is. It's got my initials, says Waymo. It's got my initials up there on the top. So I know this is the one that I hailed. And as you're seeing, there is no driver. So I'm in the car, making sure I got my luggage loaded. Yep. Here we go. And it says, they said, hello, David. And now I'm going to start the ride. And it looks like you're on your way again, sir. Yes, I am. Is there anything else I could do to help you? I think I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope you have a pleasant day and have a great afternoon, evening, morning, daylight, savings time. <laughs> <laughs> have a great day. You too. Bye. All right. So we are on our way. I couldn't get my seatbelt in the right spot. Um, so they pulled the vehicle over. Rider Sport jumped in and communicated with me and said, uh, we need to make sure we do that. And then we pulled over so I could get, move into the front seat. We are on our way. And uh, very similar to Google Maps and uh, Uber and Lyft's mapping. They've got pretty details, pretty good details of where we are and when we expect to arrive. And this is a really smooth ride so far. So I have been fascinated with the idea of self-driving cars for a decade or more, probably 15 plus years. Uh, of course, I think I first saw one in Back to the Future and then Terminator and a few other movies. And uh, of course, we were intrigued with those back from the Jetsons way back in the day. And uh, things are moving right along with this technology. Last I heard, there were at least five different companies competing for market share. and. Some of them are quite well known, including Apple and Google, but Waymo is, I think, the furthest along in their implementation. And the reason I'm able to do this here in Phoenix is this is one of their test cities. I think they started here, and I think they're also working on San Francisco. So after thousands and thousands of hours of logged driving, um, they started testing with people, and it is still in test phase officially if I understand right. But every ride that we do helps improve the AI and all the details and experiences we have all factor into that. And we're getting a weird sun glare there. I am the only one in this car. If you look back here, nobody else behind me. My teammates and I all talked about doing this together and uh, some of them might have chickened out just a little bit. <laughs> for some, it wasn't as important of a deal for me as it is for me. But I didn't want to miss this opportunity to be in Phoenix and not try out Waymo. So, 
Tony dropped me off at the Walmart about 10 minutes away from the airport. And this Waymo self-driving car is gonna take me to the airport and drop me off at one of the Sky Harbor terminals. I am blown away by all the cameras it has everywhere. I mean, you can kind of see from inside, you can see one that stuff there, there on top of the vehicle. There's like a 360 scanning one on the back. There's a lot inside. They say they've got video and microphones inside. So if we're goofing off or being stupid, they'll know. Um, they did say that there's microphones inside, but those are not activated unless you're talking to rider support. So when he called in to say, hey, you haven't fastened your seatbelt yet, um, then I could talk on the microphone. But as I understand it, they're not able to hear anything I'm saying right now. But yeah, it's doing a great job of smoothly accelerating from stops, anticipating when it needs to stop and slowing down to a stop. I mean, like, you know, some people are heartbreakers and some aren't. I mean, this is really the way it should be. Keeping a good distance between the vehicles in front of me. And then when we're in major traffic, when we were on the highway, there were some on either side of me. Um, it was keeping a safe distance between all the vehicles. You can see the map that is keeping track of where we are. Arrival in five minutes and when that would be. But it was able to handle interruptions too. So like when I couldn't get my seatbelt fastened in the back seat, rider support jumped in and said, I think I'll have you move to the front seat. And that made it simpler. I think I was trying to plug into the wrong um, jack for the wrong seat belt. And now we are on a roll. Wow. You couldn't see that because I wasn't aiming the right way, but several vehicles ahead of me were just slowing down. And so it was, it anticipated that several car lengths away. It was also starting to slow even though we weren't there yet. Major intersection we just passed through. Now we're going to go over to the SkyTrain terminal. We're getting close. And it's, oh, it's just navigating all the turns and everything smoothly. I expected a little bit more jerkiness as a machine's trying to interpret best moves, but it's, yeah, it's got it down. Almost there. Don't forget your belongings. We just navigated around roundabout. For your safety, the doors will remain locked when we arrive. <coughs> pull the handle twice to exit. The first pull unlocks. The second opens the door. That's the first roundabout I've ever been in in a driverless vehicle. Did that beautifully. And we are pulling up to the SkyTrain terminal. It even knows which ones it needs to pull up to. There we go. Now it says it's finding a spot to pull over. And I'm here. here. Please make sure it's clear before exiting. All right, I've got all my stuff out of there. My suitcase. All right. And if you want to see what it looks like, there it is. 